what is going on guys it's cryptic tmg and i'm back with a brand new video this time i'm going to be telling you the best five ways to stop your car from stepping out from the rear and giving you more stability under braking and yeah um, this is an issue that a lot of people have especially with p cars where you seem to have the car set for one part of the circuit the car feels really nice and then other parts of the circuit you hit the brake pedal especially at like hairpins tight corners and the back end just wants to kill you every time you try and brake into that corner so um yeah i'm going to give you a few options a few little tips and tricks that i use personally to get the car um to be more compliant and still um be able to push without having to fear for the car always always going to dump itself on the entry to corners and um, yeah it's something that's really really it used to trigger me back in the day especially um season eight when i used to use the audi in the back end every time i went into corners the back end would just keep stepping out and out and out and i just couldn't figure it out and every time i did one change to get it to sort of um be more stable it'd be really detrimental to the rest of the car and the car was just just used to get either so much oversteer under braking and then i'll try and fix it by putting on loads of sort of front brake bias and then i'll just get loads of understeer and the, the brakes would fade in races and i just want to be able to sort of brake really late and get the car turned around how i want to so um yeah with more experience now on p cars and little things i can sort of enlighten some people who might not know um little tricks just to get the car to handle a little bit better especially under braking so you can feel like you can push more and give yourself more control but anyway yeah let's get stuck into this so the first one we're going to look at is actually the downforce um, just checking out the brake bias which is extremely um, towards the rear in a Ferrari but downforce you can see um, you can sort of make the car more stable just by having extra rear downforce and obviously that's going to give you loads and loads of understeer and probably not the best for a whole circuit you don't know you might have a track that's got a lot of fast corners but it might be one or two corners where the back end seems to step out every time you hit the brake pedal so you sort of have to have that in mind um this is just the the, the way that most people know how to just get rear stability just adding more downforce but as i said it's probably not the best for the whole track and it's not really something that i do too much um i don't sort of overcompensate with rear downforce just to make it stable because i always feel like it doesn't actually um work in terms of getting a good lap time over the course of a whole lap so that's the first sort of um option i could give you probably not the one that i would use but you could always just stick on more rear downforce if you are struggling for getting the car um slowed down for corners without the back end stepping out the second one is what i've already mentioned it would be the brake bias um obviously if you put your brake bias more towards the front naturally the back of the car stops snapping as much but you do sort of get the feeling of not being able to sort of steer the car under braking and it will lock up so you're going to have to sort of make other compensations for that more than likely you're going to have to drop the brake pressure because your wheels are just going to completely lock up and that's that's never good for when you're doing a especially a full race you're going to end up killing your tires and stuff like that so um if you are struggling and you you can't sort of get the car to turn in without having the back end snap you might want to um put the brake bias towards the front and um put your brake pressure down a little bit again um it's something that i have dabbled in now and again but i tend not to sort of mess with the brake by brake balance too much and i don't really like lowering the brake pressure especially on pc because it just seems the car just doesn't slow down in time but um yeah those are the two um outstanding ones your your downforce and your your brake balance but um moving on to stuff that's a little bit more interesting and something that even i was kind of shocked about and that was the the camber um how important the camber is for um having the car in, in the right window and just making sure you can sort of get the lap times i find the camber more um more important than even downforce even when it comes to straight line speed and um, stability and a little trick that i just got shown the other day that I, i'd never really tried before but i started trying it and it does seem to work um having a little bit more rear camber than front camber really seems to balance the car out and gives it a lot more stability now it does come with understeer um but i feel like you can sort of work around that with other parts of the car with suspension and dampers and stuff like that i feel like you can get the car turning but it does seem to add quite a lot of stability when you have a little bit more rear camber um, than front it might not work on every track and i haven't used it on every track but there is certain tracks where the car the rear end seems to be extremely sketchy going through corners and especially under braking so 
I tried a little bit more rear camber in, in opposed to what I'd normally run, which is quite a lot more front camber than rear. And it does work and it does seem to be something that lets your car be stable for a whole race. And I feel like if you could figure out the rest of the car, then it is a good step to try and take. Um, next step I'd say is what a lot of people do use um, and that's engine braking. You can see in a Ferrari the engine braking only goes up to five, but for a lot of the other GT3s, I believe it goes up to eight or 10. Um, and yeah, with with the engine braking, you're going to make a car a lot more stable. You can be a lot more aggressive um, under braking. But again, the problem, the, the con with that is the understeer and also the fact that it's going to sort of mess up your fuel consumption. You are going to have to carry extra fuel. So um, yeah, engine braking is something that most people, most people use. Um, of course, it just allows you to be aggressive under braking. But I've noticed with, with high engine braking, the reason why I'm a bit sometimes with it, it does seem to mess up your downshift when you're trying to um, downshift into corners. It seems to really slow your downshift down. But yeah, as I said, fuel consumption, um, the downshift issue. But other than that, it allows you to be more aggressive. Again, you're going to get understeer. But, you know, you can you can mess around with other things in the car. You can move the brake balance back towards the rear and just to get the car turning in. But that is one of the things that does make your car more stable more often than not but um yeah i mean you can you can do anything playing with the wing just just to get the right balance and you never know you can tend you can tend to be more a bit more aggressive with the rest of the setup if you've got a lot of engine braking but um yeah moving on to one that not many people um well i don't think many people sort of know too much about and that is um the differential and obviously I think the the standard ones with the the power ramp and the coast obviously people know if you the less coast you have then the more stability you should have um, but that is more sort of off throttle so when you're breaking into a corner and you go off the throttle in that period where you're off the throttle um, that's where a lot of people have difficulty with the car sometimes the car snaps as you go off the brake pedal um, you want to just lower your coast ramp if that's the case but again that's just more and more understeer and you might want a little bit of movement but you might want secure movement where the car you know what the car is going to do it's not going to snap out of nowhere um i i do actually run my coast at 20 or 25 most of the time and it's probably not that beneficial in in terms of the rest of the circuit but it's always a it's always a challenge finding the right balance um also a lot of people don't understand that the preload is it's not really for um, when you're braking for corners but it's more mid corner especially fast corners if your car the back of your car is sort of stepping out or you're getting really oversteer just up the preload and it tends to give you a little bit more stability obviously more stability always equals a little bit more understeer but um, if you can channel that with the rest of your setup then it's definitely the way to go um, I tend to actually run quite a low preload I'm normally around 60 or 70 and I'll use other means to to make the car stable but um yeah that's that's also another thing that people don't realize how important the preload can be and um also the clutches the clutches is something that you can use to um, be more stable under braking a little bit like the engine braking it tends to mess up your gear shift a little bit um when you're trying to downshift but again it does make your car um, more stable under braking so that is also one of the tricks that i've used i have used it previously and sometimes you can go the other way you can really lower your clutches and get the car to really move about a little bit more um i've also used that as well but um i'd say for me the best trick that worked was probably the, the camber i really did like the camber um and another one is the the viscous lock now not many people use this at all but um if you didn't know about viscous lock viscous lock um actually gives you a lot of stability the higher up you have it but it for me is one of the worst ones for giving you understeer so um i believe viscous locks like a, a liquid that that goes towards the um towards the wheels so um if you've got more viscous lock it tends to just stop you from snapping all over the place but you just don't really get that turning at all and i remember i think i tried it at um I tried it at Zuhai once when I was just having a go at Zuhai and for the hairpins the car just wouldn't turn but it was so easy not to have the back end stepping out but yeah those are the little tricks um, that I use just to get the car more stable under braking um, they don't always work perfectly and sometimes it can if you don't put the all the work in it can sort of 
just leave you with the car feeling too safe but um, if you are someone who really struggles with um, the back end stepping out especially on P cars where it is quite an issue um, then yeah hopefully these tricks can help you but anyway it's good to TMG like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace